Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. How are you today? You're blessed. Hallelujah. We thank you for our worship. We thank you for our praise unto the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. Can we please be on our feet? Let's begin to worship and just let us begin to thank the Lord and say, the Lord, I worship you this morning. Your whole word, you say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you, Father. We worship you. Hallelujah. Be unto your name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we are here this morning to worship you. We come in spirit and in mind. We come in all of our hearts to worship you. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen.
Hallelujah. It's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. Above all the names. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. Above all the names. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. Above all the names. Today is the first Sunday of the second half of 2022. Indeed, we are thankful. Hey, I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. Above all the name, I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. I will lift your name, Maya. Hey, above all the name. I will lift your name. Great, 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 you are a great God. 
Emini TJ Emini Oloru Kola Emini Mashe Beru Emini TJ Emini Oloru Kola Emini Mashe Beru Oloru Kola La 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 Oh, igi, 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 kabi ya usi Oba to, 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 kari ya ye Emi, emi, emi ni mashe beru Emi ni tije, emi ni oloru kola Emi ni mashe beru Emi ni tije, emi ni oloru kola Emi ni mashe beru Oloru kola, la, 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 la Oh, igi, 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 kabi ya usi Oba to, 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 kari ya ye Emini, emini, emini mashe beru Angels are singing You are worthy, oh Lord 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 You are worthy, Lord. 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 We go there. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. You can dance, you know. Don't, you don't need preaching to dance, you know that. You don't need preaching to break your fall. All you want is to offer him the fruit of your heart, the fruit of your heart, of the man of your body. Give you praise, mighty God. 
start with a short prayer father lord we just thank you for bringing you into our bringing you bringing us into your presence once again father lord we just thank you for allowing us just to have the strength to make our way to church just to just to have another day to glorify your holy name father lord we just thank you for the life of of the 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 gyop father we just thank you for allowing us to just to just orchestrate another service this this Sunday, we thank you for the beginning. The f- we thank you for the first Sunday of the new month, Father. Lord. We just thank you that we're able to come before you and just have the opportunity to to, to worship in your presence and and just magnify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 So as we can see, the the theme of this month is irresistible life of kingdom glory. Irresistible life of kingdom glory. And when I was given this topic, I wasn't 100% sure what direction to take it in. But in my quiet time, God, God gave me direction. And, and I feel I've, I've got to a point where, where I'm, I'm happy in the topic. So first of all, I went to, the, to the, the meaning of what it means to glorify. And the verb glorify means to give weight to or to, or to honor. To honor. Thus, to glorify God is to recognize God for who he really is and to respond appropriately. Another biblical meaning of the glory of God also mentioned the ultimate fulfillment of why you're alive. It satisfies the hunger that nothing has ever satisfied before. I had a key example in Moses, and this, was, this scripture is taken from Exodus verse 34 to 29. So if we can all turn our Bibles to... Exodus, verse 34, verse 29. <clears throat> I'll read. So it says, when Moses, came down, when Moses came down Mount Sinai, carrying two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were, afraid, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them and asked Aaron and all the leaders of the community to come over, and he talked with them. Then all the people of Israel approached him, and Moses gave them all the instructions the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, speaking with them, he covered his face with, with a veil. But whenever he went into the tent, of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil unto, until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given him, and the people of Israel would see the, the radiant glow of his face. So, so he would put the veil over his face until, the, until he returned to speak with the Lord. As we can see here, just being in the presence of God, just being in the presence of the Lord gave gave. Moses a radiant a radiant glow just being in his presence and people were able to see that he might not have known 
the the um, he might he may not have known he was gl- he was glowing, but people were able to see this, and he was able to instruct the Israelites. So Moses Moses came down from Mount Sinai, God's glory reflected on his face, and the people of Israel saw the radiance of his face, and they were afraid to come near, come near him. So we are all we all have a we all have the same calling, to glorify God's to glorify God in everything we do. This is why we are here. Scripture says God created us for his glory. That's in Isaiah 43, 7. And instructs us to do everything for the glory of God. So how can we do this? I came up with 10 different, sorry, nine different points as to how we can glorify God in everything we do. So if you're able to take notes, make sure you're taking notes because I feel these nine points are, are, are quite important. So the first one is serve instead of waiting to be served. So serve instead of waiting to be served. God wants his people to be humble and have a a serving heart. Even Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Just like how Christ did not come to be served as a human king, we should also take every opportunity to serve others. We can serve other people in simple ways. We can serve other people in simple ways. We can open the door for the elderly or carry their stuff for them. Another is by taking the initiative to serve drinks or food to those who are with you. You can also offer a ride to people struggling daily with transportation from and to work. So your serving doesn't necessarily start and end in the church. We are, we're called to go out into the world and serve others, so not necessarily just in the church. I've got two verses to go through in regards to serving. So the first one is Matthew Five verse sixteen. So if we can turn to Matthew verse five sixteen and it reads <clears throat> In the same way let your deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So as we serve in the world, people you may think people are seeing your service, but what they're actually seeing is God's glory. So what they're actually seeing is God's glory. So the next verse is Proverbs 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Bear with me. And it reads, If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. Okay, swiftly moving on to the second point, and it reads, Think before saying anything. Think before saying anything. If we can turn to James chapter 3, verse 5. Bear with me. James chapter 3. Sorry. In fact, could someone read? Are we able to, to get a reader? James James. Chapter 3, verse 5. Mm. Mm. So in the Bible, James 3 talks about the need to tame your tongue. This scripture reminds us that it is wrong to worship God with our tongue and slander other people with it. It also emphasizes the need for spiritual teachers to responsibly to be responsible with their um, with their words. It is nearly impossible to tame the tongue truthfully. It is hard to keep the mouth from saying negative and hurtful words when you are angry. That is why it's best to make it a habit to think hard before you say anything. You can also choose to keep quiet or just leave the scene. For me personally, um, definitely when I get myself into a situation where I feel I may be angry or or, or, um, or maybe um, about to say the wrong things, I'm one to just keep quiet and keep it moving. It's easier said than done, but it's something that needs to be practiced. Sometimes silence can be the best response. Okay, um, the third point we are moving on to is choose kindness. Choose kindness. And the verse anchor to that is Luke chapter 6. Verse 35. Luke 
chapter 6, verse 35. <clears throat> and it reads, Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward will be, in, will be, your reward from heaven will be very great. And you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. So I noted down here, kindness comes from the heart. Acts of kindness, acts of kindness aren't done expecting anything in return. They're just simply done. I feel like in the world we live in, it's like you can't just do something and not expect something in return. Like people will look at you in a funny way. You're just like if you if you do something, and they'll ask, wait, did 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 this person not repay you? Did this? We as Christians have to go out there and be an example of doing just for doing, just for being kind. Acts of kindness aren't done for anything in return, so we must just do and do it out of the kindness of our heart. Number four, value integrity. Value integrity. <clears throat> One characteristic that must be seen in Christians is integrity. If you want to glorify God with your life, Pursue an admirable character and reputation. Avoid being corrupted by the worldly systems around you. Some of, the, some of the ways to live a life of integrity are being honest all the time, treating others equally, and avoiding cheating or being part of corruption. Always remember that your life is a reflection of your faith. So, if you want others to believe in God and serve, Sorry, if you want others to believe in the God you serve, show them that he is real through your life. Quite recently, I learned that um, we live our lives, we live our lives exactly how we view God. So if we view God in high regard, it's very likely we will be living a life that glorifies him. So how you think of God illustrates how you live your life. The way your life, the way your life, the way you live your life shows what you think of God. I can't reiterate enough. I can't reiterate that point enough. It's going to be a little bit, yeah. Um, sorry. Okay, on to point five. Be humble. I see this is quite an, um, quite an important point. So the anchoring verse is Peter, chapter five, verse five. Once again, if someone could just read that for us, that would be... First uh, Peter, sorry. First Peter, chapter five, verse five. Mm. Amen. 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 So. I took from this, no matter how successful you become, stay humble. Do not be arrogant or boastful. Moreover, never think that you are better than others. Respect people regardless of their profession and serve whenever you can. God isn't happy with, God isn't happy with proud people. Respect everyone regardless of their profession or economical background or for... Okay, I, I made a note here saying for... For the younger guys and for anyone in general, regardless of their Instagram followers, one thing I one thing I learned quite recently is um, meeting people in real life and meeting people like on Instagram um, are two different things. You might meet someone in real life and you just take them as they are, and you might see them on Instagram, see that they have I don't know how many thousands of followers, and be like, wow, now I have to look at this person like he's like a, like some kind of big person, but we need to learn that um yeah, we need to offer everyone the same respect. Doesn't matter your your um your your standing in life, that, that that respect needs to be offered to everyone and we need to, to be humble. Point number six strive for ex strive for excellence. Sorry, one second. Strive for excellence in, in what you do, in anything you do, strive for excellence. The verse I pinned to this was Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. I'll read Colossians. Colossians 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, and it reads, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the, the master you are serving is Christ. So once you dedicate everything you do to the Lord, it makes it a lot easier to, to, to give it your best because you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for your heavenly father. Uh, so when you have that mindset, you're, when you have that mindset, what you're doing is for God, you will find motivating yourself to strive for excellence a whole lot easier. Point number seven. <clears throat> seize every seize every opportunity to encourage others with God's word. Seize every opportunity to encourage others with God's word. Romans 15. Sorry. Romans 15 verse 2. Romans 15 verse 2 mentions we should help others we should we should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord it was mentioned earlier I think Emmanuel mentioned it during foundation study um, the reason you need to glorify God with your life is, is so people around who need who need to know can see can see him if God if God has changed your life for the better he can also he can also be others hope and help them change their situations. You, can, you can't encourage others to trust God, God if his goodness is not evident in your life. Living a life of integrity and love for others will open doors to share the gospel with those who need to hear it. Given the opportunity, have the courage to encourage people using wisdom from the Bible. So once again, your encouragement doesn't just start and end in the church it ends out it starts out there in your workplaces in your places of study wherever wherever you venture out into the world you should encourage everyone because you don't know your word of encouragement might might build someone up and 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 lead them to to to, to start maybe a positive journey a journey in their life that that you you were able to trigger okay into point eight being faithful. Being faithful. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Romans chapter 4, verses 20. <clears throat> and it reads, Abraham never, Abraham never wavered in belief. In, sorry, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. So no unbelief made him waver concerning his promise to God. Faith, I think faith, we have to think of it as a muscle. The only way we can, we can train that muscle is by is by exercising it. Like me, I'm a I'm a personal trainer, and um, one thing I know when you when you get in the gym, you might not see results straight away. It's a gradual, you're like you're a work in progress. As the weeks go on, you might see you might start to see some some physiological changes, but it's something you have to exercise over time. So without taking that leap of faith, um, yeah, you won't exercise that muscle. You have to train it daily. And it will grow stronger and stronger, and you'll find it easier to, to have faith in God. Okay, the last and concluding point is living a life of purpose. So the purpose of your existence is simple. To live for God. Living in his will and allowing the Lord to use you for his glory will give you, will give you joy, peace, and a sense of fulfillment. Moreover, it will bring favor and blessing that you have never asked for. When we are living in our purpose, the glory of God is on full display in our lives. 
We were born and designed to live in the glory of God. We live in a world that is constantly trying to devalue the glory of God and his goodness. As Christians, we need to strive to be a tool that God's glory can shine through. We need to strive to be a tool that God's glory can, can, um, can, can shine through. So it was around about last week, yeah, so the whole of last week, I went on a Christian retreat in Wales, and uh, I had the, the honor of, of being baptized. Um, yeah, I had the honor of being baptized, and people might be surprised that I'm, I'm 25 years old, I've been in the church my whole life, and I haven't been baptized. And, um, and the key word for me was, was being intentional. And I feel like up until this point of, of my life, I maybe haven't been, well, the last time I was baptized, I, I must have been like 11 or 12. Everyone was getting baptized. I said, let me, let me jump in and get baptized because everyone's doing it. And I feel like um, at the point last week, um, yeah, inten- being intentional really, really, um, really drove me in, in, in making the decision to get baptized. And even just being away in Wales, being in the Christian retreat with lots of young people surrounded by positivity, it made me realize more than ever, coming back into the normal world, the world really just, everything in the world is kind of set up to just to devalue the way we see God. Um, yeah, devalue the way we see God and kind of drag us kind of down to a level and we have to we have to remain in constant communion with him we have to remain in 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 communities where where we're reminded constantly that um that god is the lord of our lives and we need to we need to live through him um that rounds up my message guys i know i i (laughs) i sped through it quite quickly but um yeah that that rounds it up if there's one thing that you take away from this it is the last that I say that we are that that um sorry. Yeah, we need to continue to elevate our our the way we view God and um and when once we do that it will be evident in our lives. People will see that and God will get the glory, essentially. Thank you guys for for listening to my message. I'll just I'll just close with a short prayer. Uh in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time in your presence, Father, Lord. I just thank you for, for just speaking through me because I know these words that I, that I spoke today were not of my mind, but, Father, Lord, they were through you, Father, Lord. I thank you for just using me as a tool, Father, Lord, to, to show your glory. I just pray, Lord, as we go away from this message that you would just strengthen all of us and allow us to, to, to go out into the world, Father, Lord, and, and be a tool, Father, Lord, that your glory shall shine through, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, I commit the GOYP into your hands. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to allow us to go from strength to strength, Father, Lord, Amen. and you will allow us to grow in this church, Father, Lord. You will allow us to grow outside of the church, Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen.